I'm Rhonda Wolf. Welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church and our evening prayer for Wednesday, December 9th. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins to God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. In the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, and will now is now and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Today's reading is Psalm 34, found on page 627 of your Book of Common Prayer. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. No one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading is from Micah 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come to him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, 
And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from John 17, verses 1 through 26. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the word world existed. I have made you your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name, that you have, in the name that you, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have joy, they may have my joy made complete in them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. I ask not only on behalf of those, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, 
and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And today, we will read about Francis de Sales, Bishop, and Jane de Chantel, monastic workers of charity, 1622 and 1641. Francis Sells served as the Roman Catholic Bishop of Geneva from 1567 to 1622, but today he is primarily known for his writings on prayer and spiritual direction, particularly his work, Introduction to the Devout Life. As a young man, Francis studied for a political career, but he was deeply anxious for his salvation, prone to melancholy and despair. However, while a visitor at the church in Paris, he had a profound experience of the love of God. The sense of God's love and mercy would mark his writings on the spiritual life from that time forward. In response to this overwhelming sense of God's love, Francis changed his trajectory and resolved to become a priest. In 1602, he became the Bishop of Geneva. Although he was forced to remain in parts of his diocese that were outside of the city, since Geneva itself was under Calvinist control. He wrote a number of books on spiritual life which stressed the importance of love for God and neighbor rather than focusing on sin and penitence, and which were notable in being directed towards lay people. The influence of his introduction to the devout life was not limited, limited to Roman Catholic circles, but exerted an influence on Protestant spiritual writers as well, including Anglicans, in addition to his writing, Francis worked with Jane de Chantal in her foundation of a new religious order for women, the Congregation of the Visitation. Jane de Chantal was wealth, a wealthy young widow whose husband had died, leaving her with four small children. In her grief, she resolved never to remarry. She devoted herself instead to caring for the poor and the sick, raising her children and managing her husband's estates. Francis de Sales would become her spiritual director in 1604. In 1610, Francis and Jane established the Congregation of the Visitation, initially devoted to serving the poor and the sick. The order gradually evolved into a more contemplative direction. During Jane's 31 years in the community, she gave spiritual direction to a number of women and men in the form of letters, many of which have been preserved. Unusually, her order actively embraced sisters who would not be considered by other orders because of their poor health or advanced age. When others questioned the wisdom of this decision, Jane merely replied, what would you have me do? I rather like sick people myself. I'm on their side. By the time she died in 1641, the order had already grown to include 34 houses. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Most gracious God, who has bidden us to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before you, teach us, like your servants Francis and Jane, to see and to serve Christ in all people, that we may know him to be the giver of all good things. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on doing your will, that, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through the mercies of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us. And to all whom you have made, we bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, and for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son, when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world's knowledge of your truth and in this age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of all hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.